Hello, my friends, and welcome to The Chew. I'm Robert Wallace. This is the place where we ask, are we choosing the way of Jesus or are we choosing our own way? Today, the way of Jesus is God's will. Have you ever complained to God about what's going on in your life, the lives of others you know or around the world? It's okay. He can handle our complaints. God didn't strike Habakkuk down for complaining or anyone who came after him or before him with complaints. Let me ask you, do we find Habakkuk's complaints familiar? I know I do, and I suspect you do as well. So why does God allow violence, injustice, wrongdoing, destruction, strife, and conflict? Well, Habakkuk, like ourselves, wants God to answer that question now. In fact, as we read in chapter 1, he's telling God what he wants God to do. How often do we seek God with our own answer for how God should answer our prayers? How often do we pray to God to resolve our situation in our way? You know, while we've got these questions rolling around in our mind, I think it's important for us to remember a couple of verses found in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. God says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts your thoughts. Now read with me what God said to Habakkuk in chapter 1, verses 5 through 11. God tells him, look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. God is raising up the Babylonians. He's turning them loose on the world, allowing them to follow their own strength with their God. The answer is not the one that Habakkuk was looking for from God. I dare say to you that this is not the answer that we would be looking for today either. In Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3, God gives another response. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger. Wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. So to go back to our first question, there are any number of reasons why God allows things to happen. God wants us to trust him. He wants us to put his faith in him. And sometimes his answer is not yet. What will happen will happen at the appointed time. God is waking, waiting for the appropriate time, and now he is faithful. In our passage, he will ensure the survival of his people. What God requires of them and what he requires of us is faith that is lived out in his will, not our own. Paul puts it this way in Romans chapter 1, verse 17. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. To trust God and his will, we must live by faith. No matter the storm, no matter the circumstance, faith in his will for our life is better than what we think he should do in our situations. His will often means that we wait patiently. Often, he is waiting for us to accept his will for our lives. Since we believe that God knows all things, we will do well to step into his will Trust him and obey him. 
Understand this, my friends, the way of Jesus is God's will. The question we have is which way are we choosing? Are we choosing the way of Jesus that leads to life? Or are we choosing our own way? I pray that as you prayerfully consider what I've shared here with you today, as you read these passages and verses that we've talked about today, that you will start by inviting the Holy Spirit to give you eyes to see and ears to hear God's truth from his word, that you will have a receptive heart and mind to receive these truths, and then that you will take a step of faith with the same boldness, commitment, and courage of Jesus. I pray you'll have a wonderful day, my friends. Go in the peace of God. Blessings to you. Bye for now.